going on? Oh, we went deep in the mystery yesterday. It was a nightmare. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a real nightmare. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me, me and Nick over there, we went, uh, we started mapping out. I think last, last week we did like the minorizing, which really helped me a lot to think about like the first one. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. This is how I'm thinking. The first one, the the major B bot, like the major plus the flat six and flat three. I'm thinking about it like a Dorian with a flat two and a flat five. Yeah. I mean, that's how I visualize the neck. You know, I see my major scales as Dorian. Mm -hmm. And it's just the adding those tones, you know. Yeah. So, so the adding of the tones to make the minor scale, though, the only difference between that major and the minor is that instead of a flat nine i have a seven right uh so so like dorian with a flat five and a flat and a, and a seven or whatever right but right right flat five and a flat seven yeah. oh because you're thinking about like a melodic minor with a flat five and a flat right seven. yeah for me i was thinking about like a dorian with a flat five and a natural seven either way doesn't yeah. matter <laughs> it's the same thing. yeah same thing same thing but since it's called like in the book holdsworth in the just for the curious uh -huh. book holdsworth says jazz minor and every time they say jazz minor it's a melodic minor so right. when i wrote the book i was just trying to use that system that they used I see. just to keep everything like some sort of consistency you know and then the the weird one was like the like the dominant one because then like i it would be like a door because oh, it's got a major third <laughs> yeah yeah but again like i'm just seeing that as like uh dorian with the added tones right so i'm just visualizing the neck is dorian yeah no i i totally see that now we have danny here how yeah. when, you were, when you went to like apply any of this stuff to saxophone which i know you play or played uh two in a while but how, yeah. how does that work like how do you visual i don't know i don't even know because it's like you know for me i've been playing with them for years but i still don't know how you visualize a saxophone as a guitarist yeah um well you know it's interesting i always talk with my students about how guitar is one of the only instruments that you can learn a bunch of scales and arpeggios and not know what note you're playing whereas when you play a saxophone typically you're learning like you know, if you learn in school band, you're learning to read and you're learning the notes at the same time. You're associating those notes with the fingering on the saxophone, right? right. So like everything is uh, on the saxophone, it's the same kind of thing. I'm just adding those extra notes, right? So I know my major scales on the saxophone and then I just add those extra notes and I see what, you know, and I like to break things up into subsets and all that stuff. So, um, it's kind of weaving in and out of like harmonic major and uh you know like so with the flat three flat six scale you've got the hungarian minor in there the harmonic major in there you've got melodic minor in there so like i'll think about those different scales and just weave in and out mm -hmm. you know? that's how i do it on guitar too i think about that but sometimes i think i mean i have thought about like um so when i'm playing my saxophone sometimes i'll think in my head i'll be thinking about the guitar neck and i'll be thinking about a holdsworth fingering like the minor third half step and then i'll just think of the notes on the guitar and play them on the saxophone and see what it's like to play minor third half step on a saxophone you know let me ask you this well, what do you mean when you say minor third half step so like yeah on a guitar it's like a shape so <laughs> minor third half step okay yeah right. so i saw on the guitar i see this shape i mean it ends up being a minor third half step on a saxophone too but it's like you don't have this visual shape yeah though. when you yeah. do this shape do you mean doing it just once or, or everywhere that fits in the scale so here yeah we're... everywhere that fits in the scale so like uh with the the jazz minor thing right I might think of something like that and try to play it. What other notes are you playing? Whoa. So C, B, A flat, E flat, D, B. Say again, I'm going to think about C, it about on position. C, C B, A flat? Yeah, C, B, A flat. Yeah. 
G. And then E flat, D, B. E flat, D, B. Okay. okay. So I'm like, uh, okay. And then back. And then he, he, he did that like that. And then I went down an octave lower. But on a saxophone, you might not have that range. It depends on what the range is. Yeah. Right. I mean, I guess that's the biggest issue of like actually transferring Holdsworth playing two saxophones. Like he is mm -hmm. so wide in his mind. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, there's notes like, you know, like the lowest note on a saxophone is B flat. Right. So um, if you're playing like tenor or whatever, which is what I typically play. So uh, um, obviously there's range differences, you know, so you can only do what you can do. Yeah. You know, you have to transpose it. You have to like, you know, you have to work it out to where it's going to fit within the range. So question. So that was basically a pentatonic, right? What you did. It was five notes. Yeah, that, that was that uh, one, two. Yeah, because you have that B twice. Oh, that B twice. Right. Yeah. But, right? So when so, you play, do you think about it like a scale that you just play around and improvise like it was a regular scale? Or you yep. specifically about the melodic pattern going down? Uh, well, I visualize the scale and then I'm trying to make melodies Right, same thing that I do on guitar. You're trying to make melodies within that scale. Yeah, so just like juggling those notes around. As yeah, you juggling those notes around. Yeah, uh, yeah. One, one of my, one of you know we, we were on tour with him for uh, with Alan for a month, and uh, one of the best like I've said this saying to like a thousand people by now, but like you know he he, he pulled aside and he said like uh, you know, I was like all this music stuff. You just wiggle your fingers and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, you know, there's, there is really like a deep truth to that too, because it really feels that way when you're improvising. Um, okay, so I, I think that what Danny, to me, what's inter like a, a real question I have right now is when you're talking about like shapes and like these three note things specifically like the minor third half step and the half step minor third it happens in multiple places in yep. the scale in all these scales how much of your actual playing exists in these three note subsets off of it intervals rather than seeing them as a part of something like harmonic major or some sort of weird pentatonic or do you do you ever just go into that kind of mode of playing of thinking like of three note subsets yeah okay. yeah yeah it's kind of like uh it's a constant shifting of thinking right so i have the same issue with like uh like something i struggled with is like having all the jazz language and stuff in my playing and thinking of you know having all these lines and everything that are like half uh approach notes and flat nine resolutions and all this sort of stuff right um and then taking the allen approach trying not to see things that way but i still have this vocabulary that i played for years and years uh that's not they, going they, they don't match it's not going anywhere yeah they don't yeah. match right so i've struggled with um at first i struggled with like you know uh, everything just being a scale right uh -huh. But after I just kept messing with it, messing with it, messing with it, eventually I started to like that approach better, right? And I tried to, I did my best to avoid uh, like any sort of language, right? That's kind of one of the things I feel is uh, good about this approach is like people can be, you don't have to rely on cliches, right? You're yeah. really just free, like Alan says, to really, really try and improvise, right? He says he's trying to really, really improvise and not fall back on all these. Uh, like I have a quote from him in the book where he goes off on like traditional players and he's not very kind yeah. about it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is What's like just not, um, which is not much like him, right? I can read you the quote if you want. Sure. You know? uh, hang on a minute. 
but like eventually, you know, what I did is, uh, or what I do sometimes, like, so sometimes I go through, go through phases. Everything is phases, right? Mm -hmm. So like, um, hang on one second, I'm trying to get to this thing. I have a question. After. Yeah. All right. So here's the quote. Uh, what I was going to say was, um, I go through phases where there I went through some a phase where I was trying to like play over standards uh using just the scale based approach uh -huh. right and then I got to a point where I would switch my thinking and I'd go into like traditional kind of thinking and then it would just switch and I'd go into like the scale based kind of thinking you know so I can switch it mm -hmm. like that um but that's over years of working on it you know? sure so but anyway here's the quote oh shit hang on a second he says i have no desire whatsoever to be what someone would call a jazz player who just plays the same shit excuse the language as i've been hearing for years drives me bats to hear that same old bebop approach to things. There's nothing wrong with it then, but it seems weird for people to do that now. There are just so many things they could be doing. In essence, sometimes people who are supposed to be jazz players are actually less jazz players than I am. I at least am not trying to play something that I've heard a lot before or go through the motions. These musicians are actually fantastic, but something I've seen quite a lot in the past few years is people trying to play like other people old when those guys were doing it originally when charlie parker was doing it that was new there are people playing jazz now who are supposed to be improvising really they're not because they're just playing the formulas to every piece of music they do that's not jazz to me jazz means to really really try to improvise to approach each song in the same way to approach each song in the same way is over so it means music has become formulated that everybody's playing the same cliched things over the changes and they play them in the same way. That can't be jazz anymore because people are just playing that, playing what they've learned, what they've practiced. I feel like a rock guitar player, which is what I am really, rather than somebody going through the motions, um, playing to further things. A lot of fusion players sound the same because they're trying to squeeze bebop language into a rock context. They start out playing the usual old tire rock phrases, then they go on to the tired jazz phrases over the rock. There's got to be something else. Ah, we used to say something similar and then the establishment just told us to eat a dick. So. <laughs> <laughs> what? Couldn't hear. Yeah, the jazz establishment never hired us, so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Jokes uh, on us. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, but I do have a question. So I feel like, I feel like this question is what people ask me sometimes, like students, when I show them the scales to play over 251, for example, and they say, say to me, but what I play doesn't sound like jazz. So mm -hmm. I kind of feel like what I play doesn't sound like Holtzwolf. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, but I like think, I'm not I think sure if I'm doing it. I think he answered it in the sense that like, it just, like, the, you just got to sort of have this equal treatment to the notes that like, doesn't, that like, I feel like the moment you slide into like doing like exactly like a flat nine resolution or like outlining changes or using like some sort of enclosure it gets away from that sound. Yeah, but that for me even to for I told you for jazz, that's a little bit more modern. Like modern in the sense of uh, not functional harmony, not modern like nine. Like when short, yeah. nine, like when short. So yeah. here it's like to me when we we talked about those five notes, like does it I don't know if it sounds like like I it's not that like I played and I was like, am I getting it? Is this it? Do you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. that's one of the issues. Like, oh, like, like you have the idea of like, is this working? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is like, so one of the things is you have to get used to the sound of these scales, right? These yeah. scales, these nine note scales have a particular sound and you have to get used to that sound as like a whole, right? Yeah. So it's, I mean, this is what makes Alan sound so different from everybody and everybody listens to him. You know, like I've got a quote from David Liebman and Michael Brecker talking about, um, or it was from David Liebman actually, he was talking about uh, when him and Michael Brecker were playing together and they were in Alan's band, they were like the uh, some jazz festival. 
and Alan's band was on stage with Gary Husband and like Steve Hunt and everything. And David Lehman looked over to Michael Brecker and said, do you have any idea what they're playing? And Michael Brecker looked back at him and said, I have no idea. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so, I mean, it's like, uh, this approach creates something different, you know? Yes. And so, and like these sounds are, it's like a, a, a world of sound. Each scale is like a world of sound. And it's like with Alan, you know, he's modulating from sound to sound. So it's like, it might be one measure of, you know, jazz major at flat three, flat six into a measure of mode three into a, you know what I mean? And it's like modulating. And that's why like, um, that's why it sounds so unique and so different. And you listen to Alan and you just go like, what, you know, when you first hear him, yeah. it's like the like first time I heard him, I mean, I was 14, first time I heard him, but like, I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, I yeah. Don't know. yeah, when he plays with, uh, so, it makes sense to me more when I think about him playing with a trio, and obviously I heard him more with a trio cause, because of a two, but when he plays with a quartet, like what does the piano do? Does, does that make sense, my question? Yeah, like, okay, that's a good question. Like Steve, is Steve Hunt hip to this? Uh, well, no, I've got a quote from Steve in, um, in the book where they're talking about the, uh, to the bridge to funnels, right? Uh -huh. So that bridge is coming from the jazz major the jazz minor flat five flat seven scale yeah right so all the chords are coming from that and steve said that he asked alan one time how he was thinking about that uh bridge like what he was and alan just gave him a group of notes he said i'm kind of thinking of this group of notes it's kind of like diminished and the diminished scale is a subset in that scale in that nine note scale so the group of notes that um was probably the nine note scale he said i'm thinking of this group of notes but steve hunt what he did is he just decided to take uh triads and make a scale out of different triads that he could see within those chords so what i do in the book is i break it down it ends up if you take the triads that he chooses and you turn those into a scale, it ends up being like a mode three and a, a diminished scale subset, right? Of that uh, nine note scale. When you scale, the scale when you turn it on a scale, that's exactly how I thought about it immediately. I was like, okay, that's just like F F major and F sharp minor. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Right. Yeah. If we yeah. It. Just so I'll have an easier time to, to picture it. Right. Yeah. That's why I do like the subsets, right? I try to find all these different subsets uh, because it helps me also, you know, you're breaking the scale into familiar chunks, right? So you can find chords that you're familiar with and you can use that scale over those chords. Right? Well, now, if you're using the scale, go ahead. Can I have one? Okay. So, sorry if I'm, because that's the first time that I'm talking to you, so you guys talk, so I don't know if I'm repeating some of the stuff, but, so let's say you teach it, let's say you teach it to some, like you are right now, to somebody like me, right, that I can play a little bit, so you don't have to, you don't have to maybe teach me the notes on the guitar and stuff, but, right. but, I, but I also I cannot do that. So, how, what do you do? Do you give, like, do you play over a vamp? Like, what do you give your students? Like, you yeah, know, usually a band. Band and let's see what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Like, yeah. All changes. I mean, I think the thing that really blew my mind this week is like realizing, oh, they all could be played on a minor chord. They're just like different colors on Dorian, right? It's like you have the C major right. scale well, sort of in the center. You can use all three of those nine note scales. So it's like, I don't know, can I screen share on here? I don't know. Oh, you might yes. have to no? make, uh, if you're hosting, you might have to like invite him to screen share. How do you do that? Oh, I know Google Meet usually. So you Google Meet. Uh, Nick? Uh, I might have to cruise around you there. I'd have to look. It's Jamie? Not up there. Uh, team chat? Maybe. No, it's not, not going to be there. Well. It's going to be downhill. Because yeah. right. screen share is something to use all the time. Right. Um, whiteboard sure, maybe. Sure, the arrow on oh, screen, screen, screen. And then I think you should be able to invite Brett. Brett, one, two, screen share at a time. Yes. Oh. Awesome. Okay. I think you can do it now. You could have probably right. seen it. Oh. Yeah. The question makes sense here, Danny. Do you understand what I'm asking? Ah, there we go. 
All right. So this is like the next book I'm working on is actually taking um, the 22 scales from the in the mystery book and trying to devise a system of organization, tonal organization. Right. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, I got these made these basic uh, diatonic scales and then like mode three, you know, this is what you get into with mode three is you end up with all this stuff. What I'm doing is I'm taking major, minor, dominant chords, and I'm putting like all the possible uh, scales and ways you can play them. So like jazz minor, uh, add flat six off the root, up a fifth, up a major third, right? Okay. All this stuff. So I see. So you're saying like what all the dominant structures that are in that. So you could right. So well, this is all major. Going. So this is just major seven. So just a major seven chord. You've got all these scale possibilities. Uh huh. So right? I, I, different I degrees. That, I understand that, but that doesn't really answer my question. So maybe I didn't find like, my question. How, how do, so yeah, like can, can you can you hear us? Uh, uh, can you hear us if we play together? Yeah, I can hear. Right, so let's say you're doing which, which kid you want the C one or the D one? Just like what's easy for you? C. Yeah, C. All right. So let's say we do. He's gonna play C minus, right? I'm just gonna play a D minor chord, and you play that C major scale. You're gonna play C. Wait, you're gonna play C. Let's you. Well, let's let you the scale out of us. Yeah, yeah, just like a the, so that C major with a flat three and a flat six. C major with a flat three and a flat six with an E yes. flat. Yes. Okay. Six. Okay. I, I looked at like a minor. Okay. Yeah. So let's okay. say this one. Yeah. So let's say if he plays it, let play one, two, the comping. Three, just comp. I'll, I'll start playing right. So we're doing that. One. I'm saying that it's uh, what am I am I doing it am I not doing it <laughs> <Really? laughs> that, like, it's like a question because if if I have a jazz student and he plays like I would tell them like, well this I mean is... I, th I think that's Brett but Brett answered that like the, the point is that you have to develop sort of an ear for the scale to where you find shit that you would like to do because obviously like there's a big margin of error here in terms of like the places you land, like if I'm playing a D minor and you keep landing on, uh, you know, E flats, it's gonna be. A Wait, why are you playing D minor? Because it's in there. Oh, I see what you're saying. So. Yep. So the other thing I'll do with students is I'll have them write etudes, right? So I'll say, uh, you know, like take a D minor seven, write an eight, like a four bar. Just a line, write some lines, you know, work out some language, some ideas, you know, so they can start making the scales uh, musical. Right? That's what I did with like my Messian etude book, right? Yeah. So I took those uh, Messian scales and I composed little mini pieces that can be played in duet situations so you guys could play it together, you know. Oh. Uh, so it's got like a comping thing and it's got... Um, uh, the line or whatever, right? And that's how I worked out a lot of this stuff too, and how to be able to make it sound musical and start making sense, you know? So I have like some language and some ideas in these scales, right? Uh, I saw a lot of points of what you said, the cotons don't, don't really matter. So it's like, would it be the same if you played D minor or you played C7? Because C7 also exists in both. C7 does not exist in that one because you don't have a B flat. Um, oh, you don't have a B flat? No, no. You have an E flat and a flat. G seven would G exist. Yeah. G seven. All, all the harmony from C major, okay. C harmonic major, uh, yeah. C minor, harmonic do... minor. Oh, I yeah. see. Do you mind if we do it just for one second? Yeah, three, four. <laughs> I mean, 
I don't know. It's starting to sound in to me. <laughs> it sounds great to me. It sounds great to me. Yeah, exactly. I love that. It's not about sounding in. That's not the point of it. The, I, I mean, me and Nick have been doing it so much. We, we keep like, it's like, this sounds oddly okay now. None of it is <laughs> like... The first week, like, ugh, ugh, like, you like know, none of it is really out, you know? Like, it doesn't sound out to me. None of it. Yeah. None of what you just did sounded wrong or out to me. Yeah, so, I, I, I actually don't think about it as in that sense of wrong. But yeah. it's funny what you say it because that's not how I think about it. I think I think you need to approach um, this with more confidence. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just like yeah, this sounds this killer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I have confidence. That's not the issue. Like I yeah. said, my my issue is like yeah, I just feel it. I feel it. It's I'm I'm sorry that I'm feeling myself, but it feels hard for me to orient myself. And it's like maybe I need to. I, I get, okay, I'll tell you what, I think I know what one of my main issues with it. When I listen, when I learn jazz, which is funny because a lot of people claim that I don't play jazz, but right. when, I, when I play, and I, and I think also I know why people say it, but I didn't learn Charlie Parker licks or Sony State licks or Cannonball licks or Colton licks or, or Winchot, all of you what I liked. I was kind of trying to, I was listening a ton. And I kind of took something that to me was from the, in vibe, the same vibe. The gist, yeah. yeah, but it's very hard to do when there is one person doing it. Yeah, yeah, that's because I don't know what's the vibe of it and what's the person. Yeah, it's like the idiosyncratic is not separated from the like you know technical things he's using. Uh, yeah, so it's a challenge. Yeah. Uh, all right few things we should get down today one thing guitar wise you said that uh there are major scale shapes that we should oh, right. yeah what yeah are so, those? do what so like uh so the fingerings when alan is like um plays a major scale right he plays it like oh he's doubling up the note on the G. yeah um Everything is like, you know, very position you know, string, no matter what. Uh, well, no, like I don't do it that way. I, I don't play this all the time. I'll play it. Right. So I'll do it's like three, 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 two, three, three. Yeah. So okay. That. That's how I that's how I think about it, too. Uh, okay. And then like um, and then when I'm doing, you know, if I add the flat six or whatever, it's just So then it's three notes per string, you know? Ah. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right, so if you think of your scales more that way, and then uh, also like, you know, when you're modulating or whatever, if I was going from, you know, D minor to B flat minor or whatever. So like G flat minor, it's all like just right here, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. So just, I have my students like practice their scales kind of that way, right? So like Lydian, Mixolydian, I'll have them go through all the boxes like that rather than like the traditional fingerings, um, which so is you're, more- you're talking about like three notes per string and compensate with two notes per string on either the G or B string. Right. To stay in position to where everything's kind of locked into an octave with your yeah. index finger. Yeah. Okay. This helps like for me anyway, this helped visually with some of these other scales, like being able to add those extra notes and it not being like a big, huge deal, you know? Yes, I see that. Because so. cause then, yeah, you have space for that. But the thing is, when you're doing three notes per string with the nine note scales, you sort of are taking this diagonal trip up the neck backwards. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's just part of the nine note scale thing. The nature yeah. of it, yeah. Yeah, that's the nature of it. Yeah. Which is like right when you see Alan play a lot, isn't that what he's doing? He's like, Yeah, yeah. yeah it's constantly. That's, that's where he's doing this, true. like going yeah. this way or this way or whatever. Right. So, like, um, that's all part of that. Now, let me ask you this, symmetric diminished, how much of that is actually in the music? Because that was my original theory, 
uh, before I met you that, that there's a lot of that going on with though because it does have both of those minor second flat three or flat three minor second shape. Yep. Uh, I've got like, you know, I broke down. So let's see, I can show you uh, actually because these are all diminished phrases from Alan Solos right here. All right. So Tokyo Dream, Texas. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What was that? Oh, that's all from Texas, I think. Letters of Mark, 16 Men, Funnels, Devil Take the Hindmost, Isotope, right? So this is all diminished scale straight diminished scale phrases right okay and that's um, typically applied to a dominant chord in his thinking uh i can't remember not always uh, yeah. Give him line. yeah can you screen share that one more time for a second yeah, about d7 about yeah, it was like D flat nine. That chord doesn't even have a seventh in it, though. The voicing that he's playing over is just. Uh... Yeah. Um, Pretty intervallic stuff in it. And that's so you're. And now, will he see the, like that diminished scale as a subset of a nine note scale or it's his own its own thing, do you think? You know, I don't know how much he thought about all that. I know he thought about it a little bit because there's a chart. Uh, the Tokyo Dream chart has um, he has a symbol for the jazz major flat six scale, add flat six. And then he has like the three subset scales all like next to each other. Right. But on the chart oh, like add major so that's just the eight note scale the major bebop scale yeah. right and then he has like uh this his symbol for harmonic minor and his symbol for harmonic major if i remember right uh he has those symbols next to the jazz major flat six uh symbol. so i know he's thinking about subsets to a degree but i don't i can't say it's too hard to say without talking to him Right. I mean, I can make a lot of assumptions and like some things have to be assumptions, you know, sure. it's just because I didn't get to talk to him and he probably wouldn't have talked to me anyway. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. about it. He did not talk about, uh, about, he, about his music, about his music too. Yeah. Like, yeah. But he said enough in quotes. Yeah. Like if you go through my book and you see all the quotes I found. Yeah. He, found quite a, he found, he says a lot, really. Yeah. He says a lot. But you have to extract all the interviews, the quotes where, you know, the interviewer asked the right question and pushed the uh, pushed the subject. Right. You know? Like that's hard to find. It's hard to find an interviewer that's interviewing Alan that actually knows the questions, the right questions to ask. And then if they stumble onto him actually being in a mood to talk about it, uh, extracting as much as they can. Yeah. 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 That's not a common thing, you know. I have another question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to say something before I ask the question, and you guys tell me if I'm right before I even ask it. But it seems to me that the harmony system Dan and I use, my brother kind of came up with, it's not like he came up with harmony, but like he kind of understood that in, in popular music, including jazz until the 80s, basically, we didn't really have two half steps in a row. Um, and if you look, if you put all the notes that's possible, you get seven scales that include uh, what everybody uses, basically, which is the mm -hmm. minor, the major, the diminished, the whole tone, an augmented scale, um, harmonic major, harmonic minor, let's say yeah. seven scales. Uh, so you get basically everything that everybody uses, and then the modes are involved. And it seems to me like the stuff with Alan, he, he was saying, we're going to take it to the next level dissonance wise. So I'm going to add two more half steps. One more half step to it. Oh, one more half step. So, yeah. well, two, there's four half steps in a row in like those, in some of those scales. Oh. Yeah. Right. So, like the jazz major flat three, flat six scale has four half steps in a row in it. And, yeah. um, um, yeah. Wait, it? dominant one D has four half steps in a row in it. D, 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 no, but that's still like, no. 
Yeah, yeah. So more than three. So, so it's like it's three half steps. So it was, yeah. so his theory yeah. was four half steps or less. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. So yes. Yes. Okay. Good. So I understand that. So my question about it: when he plays, when you play a chord like voicings, would you have voicings that have all of them in one voicing? Um, I haven't found like that, but he plays structures, right? Like he moves structures through the scale. Right. So he'll take something and then just diatonically move all the voices up stepwise. So you'll get the places where like if it's like a closed structure, it kind of spreads and then shrinks. Right. That's sort of how all right. you take these structures and walk them through a scale. Right, he did that kind of thing, but like now you're doing it with like you know add flat six or whatever, so you get you might get a voicing like that. Yeah, but typically you would have one half step. Also, it's guitar, so you can't physically play two half half steps very easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm asking spread wise. For sure, you would get that in scores. Would yeah, he does that? stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, you know he has the biggest thing in uh, Looking Glass or whatever that are like that kind of thing, and it's so like what I was talking about with Mode Three and like some of these scales being compositional tools is like so I wrote this piece that was like uh, I think it's the comping for the etude in my Messian book. Right, that's pretty Holdsworth sounding. Yeah. So you got the, you know, like I would never come up with this. Some of that, like those exactly. voicings, if I wasn't thinking about this particular scale and trying to stay in that scale. Okay, let's 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 use this to transition into a messy end mode three. I feel like I feel like we've mastered everything up to this point, <laughs> and now we are finally ready. Yep. Um, so, what's a good place to... Wait, can I do another question before we do that? Sure. <laughs> so when you look at a set of changes, so if I look, if I look at a set of changes with like a jazz changes, yeah. it's not like I can play, and that's one of the things that's wrong about academia. I feel like it's not really, I look at the 251 to, let's say, a major, to C major. So D minus 7, G7, C major 7. It's not like everything works on the G7. Uh, so it's like well, a specific thing that work depends on context. Yeah. So is that that's what I'm saying. Do you, what guides you when you choose the specific modes to play over those? But your ear hours? should be the first thing, right? Yeah. What does it sound like? So your ear is going to guide you. Like you're a advanced improviser who can that knows about harmony. Uh, I would imagine, you know. I feel hear. like Danny still hasn't accepted the mystery into his heart. Uh, <laughs> he'll come around. <laughs> he'll come around. He's no, just no, no. dangling not, in front not, of the that's abyss. Not, that's not bad because you do hear, in. like, it's not bad because I do feel like the way with the, that ear develops for stuff like that, it's like you hear it and when you play it and when you hear it more and when you play it more. And because there are some changes that you can hear even known jazz musicians that they always get wrong. So there's another quote from Alan where he's talking about, to Alan, all the notes worked, right? There's no notes that don't work. Now, okay, an F over a major seven chord is dissonant. And, you know, but like, if you play that with conviction and you mean it, you can make it work. I mean, you think Alan can't make that work? You think Coltrane couldn't make that work? I think they could make it work. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, um, but there's a quote from Alan where he talks about, you know, some people uh, feel like there's, when they listen to his music, there's notes that sound not good, right? But to him, they are good. He said they might sound like, they might be considered non-diatonic and sound weird to other people, but to him, they sound good. And he said, as long as they sound good to him, that's all he's worried about, you know? Right. Yeah, that's actually one of the things that I thought that Alan has over a lot of people that try to sound like Alan. Like, I'm not obviously going to name anybody, which I don't remember the name of the person anyway. But we heard this guy play, 
and it was obviously trying to sound like Alan, but to me, a lot of the notes is played sound wrong. And when I listen to Alan, it doesn't sound wrong. Right. Well, like that comes song. down to the level of the player, too. I mean, and then there's, you know, I mean, like I a player, lot, not, not a bad player. And I hear a lot of guitar players that try to sound like Alan, and they, the thing that's missing is, is the intention of the harmony to me, right? The intention of what scales they're playing, because they're taking those shapes and they're just like wiggling their fingers around and hoping for the best, like you said earlier, but that doesn't actually get you sounding like Alan. Yeah. It just doesn't. It get, especially to somebody that knows the difference. I mean, if you mess around with these scales enough, you'll hear it more and more and more, yeah. you know? So, and I don't hear Alan doing that. I never heard him doing that. It never sounded like that to me. If it had sound like that, then I wouldn't have gone through what I went through to try to figure out what he was actually doing. Yeah. I would have just been like, because uh, I tried that. I did that, right? I posted videos on my Facebook and shit where I'm like wiggling my fingers around and hoping for the best. And like, it didn't sound good to me. You know, I mean, I posted it, but yeah. later on, I thought it sounded good at the time, but later on, I went back after I knew more and I was like, oh my God, elite. <laughs> 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 You know what I mean? Like, uh, and that, you know, it's like, it's not the fault of anybody that if they try to sound like Alan and not, and it doesn't come across, it's because, you know, they don't, nobody had this information. I mean, Alan talked about it, but nobody went until I did it until somebody went, you know what, I'm just going to have to log all the scales. He said he logged and see what happens, you know? Yeah. Maybe I'm going to do it for nothing. Maybe I'm going to do it and find a bunch of shit. I don't know, but I just decided to start doing it. Right. And then it just evolved. But like, um, the more you do that and the more you play with these skills, I promise you, promise you. Yeah. Without a doubt, you're going to listen to Alan in a completely different light. You're going to hear things completely different. Right, you're gonna understand him on a level like you had no idea you could understand him on. I promise. Yeah, yeah. All right, messy in. Let's do it. Okay, How okay. do we start? Yeah, what, we 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 want to we we have till next Tuesday to master the scale, Nick. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh man, well, I mean, it's the same similar to um to uh, what we did with the other scale, right? Where we tried right. to find subsets, but you don't have that cushy bassist of the major you don't have well you have what you have is you have like harmonic major uh drop four right say that again come again so harmonic major drop four is in there right so if you take harmonic major you just drop the f so now it's a uh, six note scale right so hexatonic oh we're doing it in c yeah, C. Six notes scale. Yeah, so. And this, this, wait a second, this correlates. If I. <laughs> what? No, my camera is gone. <laughs> the what? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but this is like, this is like a D minor. Like, I'm thinking about this in C minor. This is like. Yeah, so that's where it gets kind of tricky, right? With that kind of thing. So with this scale in C, I think of this stuff as being related like C minor, because I see these e, these minor triads. Yeah, okay, okay, that, that was my question. But yeah, so it's this structure. Wait, so what did we add to that? So, so even though like the structure is like C, D, E flat, E, F, G. No, no F. Oh, uh, C, D, no, E flat, sorry. E. I said it wrong. C, sharp. E flat, E, G flat, G, G sharp, and then B flat, B, C. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then, but then the structure we're seeing is C harmonic major with Drop. no F. So that eliminates three notes, which are the D, E flat, and F. Yes. No, we have the D, sorry. The E flat, F, Third. and G. What's that it is? I don't know what it's supposed to sound like, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounded pretty right. Yeah. So, then, no, we have an I note, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, but, but, so that 
C harmonic major without the fourth is going to happen also on A flat and E, right? Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, so that's that's helpful. That's in there. Yep. Then you also have a Hungarian minor in there. Starting from C? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then that moves in major thirds. Also. Okay, so that's like C, D, E flat, uh, G flat, G, G sharp. Hungarian minor is this one, right? Yeah. And then you have that in, starting on A flat and E flat, and E as well. A flat and E. Yeah. It's symmetric. Okay. So yeah. we have those. So do what? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so I try to find that stuff, right? And then uh, and the whole tone scale is in there, and then the augmented scale is in there. Uh, there's two augmented scales a half step apart. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like starting yeah, also, It's like whole tone with five and seven. Yeah, it's whole tone with like added notes. Oh, no, added like five, seven, and flat slip. One way to think about it. Wait, wait, wait. Whole tone? C whole tone is there? Yeah, C whole tone is there. Oh, wow. It's C Alton plus uh, it's it's C Alton plus if it's augmented. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So two augmented. We have B augmented, C augmented, C augmented, C whole tone, C. Okay. So what that's... structures do you see that like start? C alt and uh, B augmented, that's how I would look at it. Yeah, but it would start on like the B flat or like that flat seven. So like, uh, so I also have like, I'll see like little pentatonic things in there, like. Uh, yeah. That's like a pentatonic thing. That starts on B flat. Uh, and then, you know, the, so I find those types of scales and then voicings, right? Like the basic voicings. And you only have to do uh, find voicings on these three notes because then it just moves to here and it's yeah. those three notes. And then it just moves to here, it's those three notes. So. Um, so you just start finding, you know, minor seven, flat five, right? Major seven, major seven, sharp 11, dominant seven, sharp 11, um, minor seven, right? So you got all those different voicings that move in major thirds and you have those arpeggios that move in major thirds. Right. And then it comes back after that to the movements, like finding holds worth well shapes right and movements so like that kind of thing right that's a holds worth movement um and then oh, the other thing i do a lot is i'll take uh like harmonic the hungarian minor and then connect it into something just another shape from the scale I see right so you got that stuff moving in major thirds so I find little like I try to find little three note per string things and sometimes I don't even know necessarily what scale it is right I'm just looking for a way to get out of this is what everybody does right so i want to be able to go it's right just, yeah different structures inside there now the main application i mean obviously there's a ton of chords that come out of it but like yeah. if you're starting to apply it against some kind of harmony like would it be like an altered kind of thing or a minor kind of thing man i actually i think the first thing i did was like major seven sharp 11. okay 
Yeah, so, because, um, you know, that's a voicing Ford Allen uses a lot, like a Lydian sound or whatever. So if you're doing... Mm -hmm. equally so it's like the c major seven yes seven, c, I did a c minor seven and then i can see altered too so okay when it comes to like let's say pivoting using this kind of thing right like let's say you're playing on a c minor vamp and you have you like let's say now we're doing like or bring it back up a step to d minor we're going to do a d minor vamp it's the only key I could really visualize the other scales. <laughs> um, so, Master is indeed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, my name is Danny, you know. That's how we're going to start. Uh, so, so he's back from an end. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. okay, I'm a, here's, here's the, so if you're banging out like, something on a D Dorian kind of thing and applying like that major flat three flat six. What's a typical thing to do? Like would I do if I'm thinking about the way that I would apply that say an altered mode, I would like superimpose an A7, right? I'd like play mm. like B flat melodic minor go into that D minor. So that'd be a pretty typical thing yeah, I do. One. Yeah. So would Messi N mode Starting on A, moving to like yeah, A. Is that like something? Is that a thing? Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, Alan does that. Yeah. So there's a bunch of examples in the book. Um, there's a bunch of examples where he's doing that actually. Okay. Yeah. So like on, you know, like we did like the goat lick last last week or whatever, right? And we so didn't that's, do it. You just you just uh, you know you just use. Oh, they real quick. To humiliate. Just, well, he knows your video. But like, he knows, he knows. Yeah, you but know, I was talking talk about, about like you got so many subscribers. <laughs> yeah, the amount of subscribers we got from it is embarrassing. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Um. We anyway, I, still left, like, I left it up. We're still getting them every day. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong yeah. with what, what you did. I mean, it's just... It's just absolutely wrong, I know. It's not what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, so that's what's going on there, right? Is he's using uh, D um, mode 3 and D mode 4 D over G minor. Over G minor. Right. So it's, he's getting that kind of thing, right? That's the that's the uh, mode three. And then mode four. That's all mode four and D. So that right. whole thing is like a D altered. Yeah. What yeah. the fuck? <laughs> Because I was trying to see it, and I was just like, wait a second, these notes don't fit this one, but it's not that one, it's the other one. Okay, so... When you say Volta, what do you mean? Vol Volta version is... So if this whole tune is like a... Yeah, in G minor, yeah. uh, but he's playing over... He's playing the mode 3 on D7. So what, what does one of the notes? Like D, E, F, or D, F sharp, or D... E, F, F sharp, and yeah. it repeats. Then it's G sharp, A, B flat, C, wait, C wait, G sharp, A, B flat, and then what? Then C, B, oh, sorry, uh, B flat, B, C. B flat is over there. Yeah, so, so. Oh, no, no, wait a second. I'm saying, I'm saying nonsense. C, C sharp, D, I mean. No, I'm saying it wrong. C, C sharp, D, E, F, F sharp. Wait, wait, wait. So, D. Yeah. No. Oh, it's what I, yeah. so it's what I said. And then... Right. This is over a G minor. Oh. Oh, D mode 4. Um, 
little bit in the shot. So it'd be D, E flat, E, G, A flat, A, B flat, D flat. So it's like, oh, okay. So it's like four half steps separated by a tritone. Yeah, but tritone. The second one is the root. Right from the seventh degree. That's so bizarre. So what other notes? So if you're playing it over a D, it's going to be... Oh, I know. It's this. Four. So, so it's D, D sharp, E? D, D sharp, E. Yeah, it's this. Oh, D, D sharp, E? Yeah. D, D sharp, E. And then, then chromatic from G to B flat. Yeah, so D, D sharp, E, chromatically from G to B flat, and then you add just a C sharp at the end. Okay, and the lick he's playing in that song is no, what I'm again? something. So the mode four part. And the whole beginning is stripped in mode three. No, uh, this part. Yeah. Right. This part is uh you can either that could either be sidestepping or those notes actually fit in mode seven. So it could be mode seven. What's mode seven? Wait, wait, wait. Before that, this <laughs> mode. I want to know where the mode. Are we again? So it's D, D sharp, E. Yeah. Chromatically from G to B flat. One to, so one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then just add the C sharp at the end. So that's only eight notes. It's, it's only eight notes. Okay, then yeah, I got it. So it's just, oh, okay. So it's eight notes. So I've got this line broken down in the book where you can see the scale and then see the phrase, see the scale, see the phrase. So if you go to like PDF that you have, you can mm -hmm. click on where it says the devil take the hindmost in the contents and it will take you right to it. Yeah. And it's all, all broken down like in depth. Yeah. Okay. Man. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's quite, uh, quite mind boggling that, uh, yep. It is at first. Yeah. Once you understand like the symmetrical nature of these scales, and then you understand Alan's uh, obsession with symmetrical patterns, right? And then just a little bit of thought working about working on the scales and how they fit what Cordy's playing over, it all makes like complete sense. You know? Yeah. And everything makes 100% sense. You know. All right. Cool. I think that's we've taken up enough of your time and uh we have good stuff to work on for another week. Yeah. I actually do a master all of yeah. this. Right, Nick? Indeed. Indeed. I was gonna say, man, I know where he's coming from as far as like this stuff sounding weird and being weird or whatever. You just gotta give it time, you know. Yeah. You gotta I mean, remember. He, no, it's not even that. He hasn't accepted the mystery into Like I said, yet. it's not even that. It was just <laughs> I want to to see where, if I'm going in the right direction. Because that's your just, problem. Just, just being uh, like I'm not gonna sit and lie down or anything, but I will. He still I'm believes on. that he has a direction to go in. The scale has a direction. You're just along <laughs> for the ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right, thank you so much, Brett. All right, man. Take it yeah. easy.